Hello students, today I am here to give a tutorial video for class 8 on chemistry. Today's chapter is atomic structure. So students, first atomic theory was proposed by Sir John Dalton in 1808, which is known as Dalton's atomic theory. The postulates of Dalton's atomic theory are Matter is composed of small individual particles called atoms. Second, atoms of an element are identical in mass and size but differ from the atom of other elements. That means in the same kind of elements will have the same atom of same size but different kinds of elements will have the different size of atoms. Next one, atoms will combine together to form molecules. Atoms can neither be created or destroyed. And last one, atoms can take part in chemical reaction. These all are the postulates of Dalton's atomic theory. There is one drawback of this theory. That drawback is, he said that atoms are indivisible. But atoms are divisible into subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons. Electrons are negatively charged particles whose charge is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and whose mass is 9.1 into 10 to the power 31 kg. Next one is proton. Protons are positively charged particles whose charge is plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and mass is 1.672 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. You can see one difference that here the mass of electron is very less than the mass of proton. So we can say that protons are having higher mass than electron. Next one, next subatomic particle is neutron. Neutron is neutral. That means charge is zero. It's neither it positive or negative. Mass is 1.675 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. Next, we'll go for the modern atomic theory. Students, you can see this picture here, the central part, the central part is known as nucleus and it's similar to the solar system. As we know in the solar system, sun is the central part and all the planets are uh, revolving around the sun. Just like here, nucleus is the central part and, and this nucleus contains positively charged particles protons and neutral neutrons. Together, these protons and neutrons are known as nucleons and these positively charged protons are attracted by the neutrons or we can say there is, a, there is an attractive force between protons and neutrons known as nuclear force. Due to this nuclear force, they are held together in the central part. Now, these electrons. These electrons are revolving like planets are revolving around the sun. These electrons are revolving around the nucleus. These are the negatively charged particles. They are revolving in this imaginary path known as orbits. These paths are known as orbits. These paths are having some fixed amount of energies. So we can say these are energy levels also. So we can say these are energy levels also. When the electrons are uh, will gain energy, it will jump to the higher energy level. And when it will lose energy, it will jump to the lower energy level. Now students, one question can be arise that these electrons are negatively charged particles and these protons are positively charged particles. So due to negative positive attraction, what will happen? This electron will fall, may fall on the nucleus. But actually it is not happening due to one outward force as we know that this is centrifugal force. Due to this centrifugal force, due to this centrifugal force, the electrons are not falling on nucleus. This is the whole modern atomic theory. Now, we will go for the term atomic number and mass number. What is atomic number? Atomic number is the number of proton equals to number of electron. As we know, always, always the number of proton is equal to the number of electron. Because the charge of whole positive charge will be equal to the whole negatively charged to make the atom 
as a whole neutron. So atomic number which is abbreviated by capital Z is number of proton or number of electron. Next one atomic mass which is also known as mass number and abbreviated by capital A. This is equal to number of proton plus number of neutron. So we can write P plus N where P stands for protons and N stands for neutrons. Let us have a look on this example. Here I have written calcium 4020. Always the lower value will be the atomic number and higher value will be the mass number. So we can say here 20 is atomic number and 40 is a mass number. So number of proton will be 20. As I said that number of proton is atomic number. So number of electron also 20. And how to get number of neutron? By subtracting mass number and atomic number. Here I have written 40 minus 20, 20. So this 20 will be its number of neutron. Next one is electronic configuration. What is electronic configuration? That is the in all these orbits or cells how the electrons are arranged. The rearrangement of the electrons in these orbits are known as electronic configuration. So here how to rearrange, how to arrange the electrons in the orbits. There is a rule known as 2n square rule where n is any integer 1, 2, 3. So by putting the value of n, when n equals to 1, we will get 2 into 1 square that is 2. So first cell orbit or first orbit of cell will always contain um, maximum 2 electrons that is k cell. Second one by putting the value n equals to 2, we will get a. So allotment of the electrons, number of electrons in the second cell that is l always will be 8. Next one, when n equals to 3, here, here first orbit, second orbit, n equals to 3, the third orbit, we will get total number of electrons 18, which is for m cell. Maximum electrons for m cell will be 18. Next one, the fourth cell, where n equals to 4, the number of electrons will come 32, and for we can say that for this n cell, total number of electrons will be 32. Now I'll I will clear it by taking some examples. First one, I have taken sodium. Sodium 11, 23. This 11 is the atomic number. 23 is the mass number. So we can say number of proton will be 11. Number of electron will be 11. And number of neutron will be 23 minus 11. That is mass number minus atomic number 12. Now see the electronic configuration. First cell I said total maximum electron present in the first cell should be 2. Second one 8 and remaining electrons we will put in the third cell. I have drawn this structure. This is known as orbital structure or orbital diagram. Here we can say this is a nucleus. Inside the nucleus we have 11 protons, 12 neutrons. This is the first cell which is known as K cell. And number of electrons present over here 2. This is the second cell. As second cell L contains 8, I have written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here the electrons are present is uh, as pair. Last cell which is M cell contains 1 electron. That is M cell contains 1 electron. By this structure it is clear that how the electrons are arranged in different orbits or cells. Second one is valency. How to find out the valency. Before going that, we have to know that what is valency. Valency is the combining capacity of the elements. That means by how many elements it can combine. Always valency is calculated is the number of electrons present in the last cell if it is less than 5. The rule is number of valency will be equal to the number of electrons present in the last cell if it is less than 5. See, but in case of sulfur, um, here, in case of sodium, I have put that last cell contains one electron. So valency will be one because it is less than five. But in the case of sulfur, sulfur 1632, where 16 is the atomic number, 32 is the mass number. So number of proton will be 16, electron will be 16 and neutron will be 32 minus 16, 16. And electronic configuration will be 286. 
first cell 2, second cell 8, third cell 6. So we can say this is the third cell or we can say last cell. Last cell contains 6 electrons which is more than 5. For this 5, the rule will be we have to deduct 8 from this number. So valency will be 6 minus 8 minus 2 because 6 is more than 5. Another case that is phosphorus 1531. Same, last cell contains 5 electrons. So it is less, uh, equal to 5, not less than 5. So valency will be 5 minus 8 minus 3. Next one is isotopes. Isotopes are the elements whose uh, atomic numbers are same. Having same atomic number but different mass number. Same element having same atomic number but different mass number. Example, chlorine 1735, chlorine 1737. You can see here chlorine contains 17 electrons uh, or protons as the atomic number is 17 here also. But the difference is mass number 35 over here and the second chlorine contains 37. So, as these mass numbers are different, they are known as isotopes to each other. So, due to different mass number, the number of neutrons will be different. Here for the first chlorine, neutron will be 35 minus 17, 18. And for the second chlorine, number of neutron will be 37 minus 17, 20. Due to their mass difference, their number of neutrons will be unequal. Next one is isobars. Isobars are the elements having same mass number, just opposite to that isotope, having same mass number but different atomic number. Have a look for this example, argon 1840, calcium 2040. These are happening in case of different elements. So we can say here 1820 different atomic number but their mass number is 40 for both argon and calcium. So that's all for today. And I'll explain more in the next class. Thank you.